Good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to Thursday morning prayer. A beautiful sunny morning, but a distinct chill in the air. And I notice that we have Sister Sue and our dear friend Jan, who's logged in. And for those who've not been able to log in, you're welcome. <clears throat> This morning, I'm dedicating our morning prayer for the doctors and nurses who volunteered from the United Kingdom to go to Africa to support those with the Ebola virus. But one particular nurse <clears throat> I wish to remember this morning, and that's Pauline Carfecki from Glasgow, who got the virus and recovered very well but over the weekend became unwell and is now an inpatient at the Royal Free Hospital in London, where her condition yesterday was quite critical. But I'm hoping through prayer, she'll make a good recovery. So we remember today all those who've risked their own life to bring succor, healing and love and compassion to the children of God in Africa. So we light our light this morning in recognition of all those who put themselves at risk so as for the healing touch of God to flow through their hands or their smile and to bring comfort and healing to those in need today. And we light the light also for Pauline who's struggling in isolation at the London Royal Free Hospital. <clears throat> and our prologue this morning, you may wish to say it after me, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother, God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Tuesday morning, uh, sorry, Thursday morning, we commune with the angel of water, saying, angel of water, enter my blood and give the water of life to my whole body. And we pray to the body of Pauline the nurse at the London Royal Free Hospital. As you say this, you contemplate the waters of earth in rain, rivers, lakes, seas, or anywhere, and the currents of the angels of water are left intensifying and directing the circulation of the blood. <clears throat> so let us just be still now. Let us come into the presence of God and let us experience the healing touch of a father, mother, God, who truly cares for the children of God. <clears throat> Shema
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And in the stillness of this hour, we come into the presence of God. We take a deep breath and we breathe in the very essence of God. We may be feeling weary this morning, or maybe we are worried or anxious, maybe fearful or fretful, or maybe we're just disheartened because of illness. So let us come to this table of light, this table of joy, this table of love, and let us use the greatest gift that God has given to you and me, the gift of free will. And let us now use that gift by inviting, invoking and calling upon the mystical heart of God. And allow the spirit of God flow freely through your mind, your body and your spirit and reawaken your heart to the I am presence of God within you so that you can do what Jesus said you would do. And he said, those who come after me will do even greater things than I did. So today, claim the power of Christ and step out in faith and wherever you lay your hand on those who are troubled or sick, then claim them for God by releasing love, the love of God. Be still now and allow the Spirit of God flow freely through you and me as we unite together in a circle of love around this holy table in the Cathedral of Life. And as we breathe in, we breathe in the very breath of God. And in our out breath, we release love to each other and to the world and to Pauline, to James, and to many others who are hurting today. Let us be still now. In our reading for this morning, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Mahatma Gandhi praised it. Nietzsche cursed it, and many people sentimentalize over it. Most of us just bow politely to its beautiful thoughts and respectfully put it into cold storage. But always it leaps to life again to provoke and disturb us. And well it should, for it is the Sermon on the Mount, a collection of Jesus' most profound and best remembered words. For non-Christians, this sermon is a frustrating, impossible sort of thing, a picture of life totally contrary to everything that is human in our kind of world. Yet even they, wistfully returned to it, half persuaded that somewhere in its hundred odd verses is the cure for human ills. For the Christian, it is something else again. It is designed to be his or her style of life, not something attained or accomplished, but something to reach for to aim at, to become the goal of Christian living. The Sermon on the Mount does not lead to salvation except to drive a person 
to the need for God's grace. It is something which, by that grace, ought increasingly to come out of an authentic Christian. It ought to be the portrait of a saint and to result in the kind of life that will communicate God's healing and power to the lives of sick, lonely, oppressed, depressed, broken, unhappy people in our world and in our community about us. This sermon is meant to be a sort of agenda and guide for our daily activities. It won't win us God's favor that has already been bestowed upon us through Jesus, the cosmic Christ and his cross. It is, however, the lifestyle of the family of God, a lifestyle we are empowered and expected to grow into as the adopted members of that family. Dear Lord, so many of your pronouncements and proclamations that were remembered and passed on by your disciples are difficult to understand and virtually impossible to carry out. Grant, O oh God, the grace and strength that are essential in order to live out your commission and serve as your disciple in my home, my place of work, and wherever I am. Amen. <clears throat> we stay with that powerful reading of the Sermon on the Mount. And we ask ourselves one simple question. It is a poignant question. Am I living and leading the life that God has planned for me? Am I honoring my heart? Am I listening to my heart? Am I making times in my busy schedule each day to switch off to the ego mind and open my heart in the silence of my oasis of love and hear the voice of the I am presence of God? Am I willing to honor what I hear and receive or do I play games by procrastinating over what I've been given? Do I dilly-dally? Do I ignore the message of God speaking to my heart? Jesus said, all things are possible for those who believe. So let us at this time this morning just say yes to God, yes to the Beatitudes, yes to love, and yes to selfless giving. Be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. In Philippines 2, verses 6 to 11, we read, Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not count himself anything above God. He did not account equality with God, a thing to be grasped. He emptied himself and took on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself, and he became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed upon him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father.
we come to this morning, our prayer time together, where we remember one another, where we reach out in God's love and share that love and where we bring to this table one another, but those whom we love who are hurting, and the whole family of God, from all faiths and none, we bring them here, and we remember them, and we ask God now to bless them. So for a moment, let us be still and listen to our heart. And if anything is troubling us, or if there's someone we're concerned about, let us name, bless, and release them now to Almighty God. And then stand back and say, thank you, God. This morning I bring the nurse, Pauline Karfecki from Glasgow, who gave her life as a volunteer to caring for those with the Ebola virus in Africa. And sadly, along with several others, she contracted the virus, but made a great recovery until last weekend when she thought she had the symptoms of meningitis. And her condition over the last few days has been very critical. So we send love, light and blessing to this dear nurse, our sister Pauline, who is struggling to live. And we ask the angels of God to surround her and her family and those caring for her in that isolation unit at the Royal Free Hospital in London. And with Jan, we pray for all gathered here and for peace on this sacred earth. We remember Sister Sue's family, especially James, where the depression has kicked in and has left him debilitated and unwell. We remember this morning our dear Sister Jan. We remember the brothers and sisters of our community, past and present. We remember Brother Paul and Brother Bjorn of the Franciscan Hermits, and we remember David and Lisa. We pray today for all those souls who are struggling, for those who have no faith, who've lost hope. We pray for the little boy who's now a young teenager from Cornwall, who's now in a specialist unit in the Midlands, and who for the last three years has been unable to return home to the specially, the specially designed unit to care for his needs and his disabilities. But apparently in the next two weeks, his family, who have cried many tears for their son, but they will be united, so we remember him. But I remember all my Franciscan brothers and sisters around the world of all faiths. I remember, especially today, the wonderful work that's been achieved in Manchester, in Newton Heath, I know it well, for I lived there as a young nursing monk in Moston, where they converted a whole street of houses for families and also for our disabled ex-servicemen and women. And I want to praise God and thank God for the goodness and the kindness of those who gave a week to two weeks of their professional life without pay to make dreams become a reality for our ex-servicemen and women who risked their lives for our freedom they gave their today for our tomorrow. So we remember them. And we pray that many more councils in the United Kingdom will follow that of the Manchester City Council and hand over redundant properties 
for our ex-servicemen and women. I pray today for our religious leaders, especially His Holiness the Dalai Lama, recovering from illness, and for Pope Francis, a great man of God. And we remember those whose intentions are close to our heart, but too many to mention. But one name I will mention, and I pray for Daniel, who seems to have lost his way. We pray the prayer of love for him, that he will come to his senses, and that he will realize that as a child of God, he is dearly loved. So let us now be still. And celebrate our divinity as a child of God. And bless every situation in our life, be it positive or negative, and then hand it over to the I Am Presence of God. We now conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Our God, you are everywhere, infinite and eternal, unknowable. Yet we call upon you and give you a sacred name. Your will brings everything into being, the multiverse and all dimensions. It is by your grace that we live. You see us as whole and perfect. We pray that we learn forgiveness so that we can see others as whole and perfect too. Guide us to understand that wealth and power are illusions. And as we dwell in the world of duality, let us discern and eschew evil. For you are beyond duality, for you are the one reality forever and ever. Amen. And our closing prayer is a prayer from the heart. Holy Father, Mother God, in the presence of St. Francis and Claire of Assisi, we come before you as your children who have been touched by your love. We ask today for the strength that we need to become the beating heart of Christ, to become his hands and his feet, and to bring compassion to this beautiful world, the Cathedral of Life, the Cathedral of God. And we ask it in the name of all names. Amen. The blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky on those we love this day and on every human family, the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky, the gifts of brother sun and sister moon and the animal kingdom be in your heart now and forevermore. Amen. As I blow out this light, I blow the peace, the love, and the joy of the risen Christ to you and to all those whom we have prayed for, and to our dear nurse Pauline Carfecki in London, who is seriously ill. Amen. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum om shanti. Solo de Caritas, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of your God, Goddess, reawaken your heart this day to the I Am Presence of God within. Thank you for joining me this Thursday morning, and it's me this evening covering for Sister, Elizabeth, for Sister Eleanor, who's got a hospital appointment in Philadelphia, so I hope you can join me, but for now, Take care and God bless you. Amen.